Hey, what's up everybody? So hopefully in this video, you're gonna be finding out how you can actually optimize yourself to think faster, smarter, and better. I've been spending a lot of time thinking about certain principles and certain mythologies for anybody anywhere in the world to apply in their lives so they can kind of optimize the way they think. So you're about to kind of learn certain philosophies and principles from way smarter people than I. Pretty much what I've done is I've kind of summarized their thought process and how they view the world. Individuals such as Elon Musk, individuals such as Richard Feynman, okay? So I'm gonna break down this category or I'm gonna break down this video in different sections. The first section we're gonna be talking about over here is number one is how the brain works. See, when most people, when they, when they look at, um, see when most people, when they look at kind of becoming smarter or thinking faster, they always look at adding more in their life. They look at the next hack, they look at the next maybe like drug, or they look at all these kind of cheats. They're trying to go from, from here to there without the actual work, without the actual journey, and above all, most importantly, without actually creating a foundation for you to have a sustainable way of thinking. So we have to understand for your body or for your brain to work efficiently, it needs healthy levels of neurotransmitters, say dopamine, serotonin, GABA, adrenaline, norepinephrine. All these neurohormones and neurotransmitters have to be at the proper levels for your body and brain to be functioning properly. And then we can go into different categories. We can be talking about the healthy fats in your body, omega-3, omega-6, omega-9, then on the B vitamins, you know, vitamin B, 3, 6, 12, etc. These are the ingredients in the recipe to have a healthy mind. And the problem today is people aren't eating healthy. They're eating a lot of you know, high fructose corn syrup, they're eating a lot of junk foods, and they're not giving the body, the brain, the necessary tools to create these neurotransmitters, neurohormones, and all these vitamin Bs and vitamin Ds, okay? So the first thing, the first thing you guys gotta do to optimize your mind is you gotta get your diet on par. I'm not gonna go into the dogmatic views of which diet is best. I'm gonna tell you what works for me. I'm gonna tell you what works in studies. For me personally, very low carb, ketogenic diet does wonders for me. High fat, not high protein. I put in the MCT oils, the avocados, the butters, the steaks. But, but, I'm a little bit more on the side of the pescatarian side where I get a lot of fish, a lot of seafood because it has omega-3s and I think it has a more mineral density than the land animals, okay? So, low carb, ketogenic diet, you can go on PubMed, you can go on Google Scholar, I don't care what you do, search it out yourself, but that's the first place I would start. Personally, it would be a low carb, ketogenic diet. Second of all, once you got your diet on pat, I will try to figure out your sleeping schedule because listen, your body repairs at nighttime, it doesn't repair it during the day, and a lot of studies, actually last year, many studies came out showing that when we sleep in proper rhythm, uh, your body actually recycles certain plaque off your cells in your mind, and they've linked to people who have very bad sleep, may cause issues with, say, multiple sclerosis, may cause is issues with Parkinson's disease, etc. So organize your sleep, get that, get get that get that on point in your life. I don't give a fuck what excuses you have. I don't want to hear it. Get your sleep in order. What I do is around say, oh, right now it's winter time, so it sucks. But around six o'clock, give or take, when the sun sets here in Canada, I put on blue light blocker glasses. And basically what I do is I also lower down the temperature so the room is very cold. I'm not really surrounded by electronics anytime past eight o'clock. So I go to bed at 10 o'clock, so two hours before bed. I'm either reading books, usually that's what I do, uh, or sometimes I like to doodle on something called a mandala for coloring book. Either or, I'm not on electronics, I'm blocking the artificial blue light. I go to bed, I wake up every day at five o'clock in the morning, I shine this light bright box, 10,000 lux with an infrared laser on that side, and then I do Wim Hof breathing in the morning for four to 10 minutes, fantastic. And then, since it's winter time over here, there's no vitamin D, I go tanning about three to five times a week for five minute sessions with a UVA, UVB uh, mixture of bulbs. Okay, that's my routine when it comes to diet and when it comes to lifestyle. And obviously it's up to you what you want to include, anything else, certain workouts, yada yada, whatever. Okay, diet's number one, lifestyle's number one. Number two, okay? Number two is this. Knowing how you're programmed. So my biggest beef, let me just grab some water. 
my biggest beef when it comes to anybody telling you how to do something, and this includes me, is they paint it as the absolute answer to anything. And in science, there is no absolute answer to anything. In fact, science is probably the only thing that's evolving constantly. So for example, Galileo said 500 years ago that the earth is round and everyone said he's crazy and they actually killed people for saying the earth is, uh, earth is round. But the issue right now is people read something and they're like, this must be, must be the answer. They read that, that must be the answer. That's not the case. And what I mean by finding out how you're wired or how you're programmed is figuring out the cycles of your body, the cycles of your mind. For example, myself, I'm a very early bird. I wake up at 5 a.m. I don't need any priming. I'm literally up. I do my things and I get from 5 a.m. to like 11 o'clock, I get a lot of work done. I have no distractions. I crunch a shit ton of work in that small period of time because that's where my mind is most optimal for work and most optimal to connect the dots between certain tasks, whether that is email replying, talking to my employees, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. My brain is most optimal for getting shit done right before lunchtime. Now, after lunchtime, my mind tends to slow down. Not slow down in an aspect that that is bad, but slow down to aspect that it switches gears into more creativity. So as the day progresses later, my mind becomes more creative. So it's not really more about the hustle, it's about thinking outside the box, maybe doing exercise, to kind of stimulate the contrarian model of thinking or how Elon Musk thinks, which we'll get into a little bit. Okay, so you gotta figure out how your program, you can't go against the grain. If you're not a morning person, you're gonna to try to do morning things and try to learn in the morning or read a book in the morning or do exercise in the morning or learn mathematics, it's not gonna fly. If you understand yourself, you understand that in the evening you're more open to more creative work, then you do the creative work in the evening or opposite. If you in the morning you know that you're a creative individual, maybe then you do your, your whatever you want to do in the morning, whether you want to learn a new language or whether you want to absorb more information from a book, it really doesn't matter. But know thyself. And honestly, you know yourself, so there's really no exercise to it. <laughs> you already know how you're wired, okay? So that was the second thing is knowing yourself. Okay. So moving along into really understanding how a person thinks, and this is individualized, and how a person absorbs information, because we've been programmed uh, through school, certain people have been programmed through society and school to think in a very linear model. And the thinking is one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, as opposed to the, the human, the human mind is naturally programmed to think in fractal terms, meaning, it goes from A to Z, Z to G, G to Q, Q to R, etc. It doesn't go in a linear path. It's very fractal, like fractal geometry or fractal mathematics. And that's how the universe works naturally as well. So that being said, when wanting to learn something new, the whole idea of you just picking something up and reading it from A to Z, it doesn't fly. This is where Elon Musk comes in. He has a great principle. And the principle is most people tie things to stories. Like, oh, that thing is green because of yada, 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 or that thing, or did you hear what she said? It's always attached to some type of mythos or some type of story, as opposed to how Elon Musk thinks, and same thing how Richard Feynman thinks, they both have exactly the same way or same model thinking, is this. Find out the basic principles of that subject that you're trying to learn. Let's say it's a new language. As opposed to just trying to learn random words, or trying to learn, say, just the alphabet of the language, what is the most common principles, no matter what, in that language? So you then you, you, you do your research, and then you do a deep dive. So this goes back to the foundation. What is the foundational principles of this language? Or maybe you're studying a book. Let's say the book's about investment. So what is the foundational principles of basic investments in a stock market or basic investments as an angel investor, then you write down these basic principles. And these principles are set in stone. And these principles is what kind of determines your thought pattern because on the journey of reading, on the journey of becoming smarter, and on the journey of absorbing information faster, you will base your new information you've acquired against the principles that dictate the subject that you are learning. And in essence, you become a scientist because what scientists do is they gather data and they take that data and they correspond it to set the theory or thesis they had at the beginning to see if they are correct. 
okay? So basically what you can do is no matter what you're doing, new language, mathematics, reading a book, understand, and this is where your own hypothesis comes in, you can go and Google, doesn't matter, you can literally have a cue card, but understand the core principles of that topic, okay? Okay, the next thing is quite simple, and this is what it is. Most people, I will say generally most, except for a few, most people, when they want to learn something new, they tend to crunch. Same thing like they do in college, university, they'll spend maybe two, three months crunching on this topic, leave it alone, and then never come back to it. However, that's a mistake, and it's proven in science that for you to absorb any knowledge or information, you must constantly force your body to regurgitate it on, at random times. What this means is the whole idea of you studying a topic, the same topic every single day, is outdated. And this goes back directly what we talked about before is the human mind does not work linearly, it doesn't work one, two, three. So if you're studying something, say in the morning, based on how you're wired, you're studying a new language, maybe Spanish, hola, you're studying a new language, and you're studying, maybe you're studying today uh, certain phrases, you're studying today maybe how to add verbs or writing, whatever it may be, and what you can do is, you don't study the same thing every single day. So if you're studying Spanish every single day, what they would recommend and what I recommend is you switch it up. Maybe study Spanish three days out of the week and two days maybe you do something else in the morning or maybe you study German or Russian, it doesn't matter. In the following week you want to study Spanish again and regurgitate that information. The whole idea is you want to regurgitate information. You want to force your body to go back into your database, into your mind, and recall what you learn. And this creates the new neural pathways that you need to actually connect the dots on what you learned in the past. So the whole idea of just picking up the same thing every single day and doing the same thing, for what Einstein said before, is a definition of insanity. So take breaks, go back, and what's great about this is you get a new set of eyes or ears or whatever and you actually absorb information much more efficiently because your body now subconsciously is creating connections that you never thought of before in the first place, okay? I'm a firm believer in controlling your stress. And what I mean by stress is asymptomatic stress and symptomatic stress because most people when it comes to learning, they wanna learn by forced nature. So they think they're, they're forced to learn because society is, telling them to, society is telling them to learn or they're forced to learn by their employer, whatever, it really doesn't matter with me. But under that circumstances, you feel stressed. And I don't think so under any circumstances you should feel stressed for learning. Learning should be a meta, a meta skill and you should be fun, you should have curiosity and there's no failure in learning. You know, fail stands for first attempt in learning. So I'm a firm believer in actually understanding how your brain is wired. Certain apps you can use or devices such as Headspace is really good, Muse is really good. Any biofeedback tools, actually one of the best resources for that is the Heart Math Institute. Check them out. They have an M-Wave 1 and M-Wave 2, uh, which you can track your alpha, beta, delta, theta waves on the mind, which is really good. So kind of summarizing this and looking at the general aspect or the general thesis of becoming smarter and absorbing information is really not uh, an easy fix solution. It's it's having a sustainable lifestyle, it's eating healthy to give your brain the necessary tools to have a functioning optimal brain, it's having a proper lifestyle once again to give your body the necessary tools to function optimally, it's also thinking very contrary, thinking in principles, thinking in just basic terms. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is why Elon Musk is so good at what he does. This is why Richard Feynman was one of the best scientists possible because Richard Feynman said it's not enough just knowing something. People know something, oh, the color of the bird, or he talks about the bird story, you know, that bird is this, or the, the different language, you know, bird is called that, that bird is called this, but you know nothing of the bird. You don't know how the bird is, uh, uh, the, the anatomy of the bird, you don't know the heritage of the bird, you don't know where the bird goes in the winter, where the bird goes in the summer. So I think there's a disease right now, most people that can recall things, but they don't understand it. And what Elon Musk does and what Richard Feynman did is they understand the subject that they're talking about. They understand everything. 
So when you look at this mouse, you can't just say the mouse moves because of energy. What do you mean because of energy? No, the mouse moves because I have my hand. My hand is mechanically moving the mouse. Well, how does my hand work? Well, my hand works because there's nerves and neurons going up to my brain. My brain works because of X, Y, and Z. So once you understand how a topic works, then you can truly, and actually, once you understand how a topic works, then you can actually educate somebody. And that's the true test of knowing a topic or knowing a subject, is if you can now take what you learn and truly understand it, repackage it in your own way and teach others, then that's when you become the master. Hope this helps. And like always, if you find value in this video, like this video, subscribe this video, and leave a comment below. I wanna know exactly what you do, uh, what's your kind of strategies and tactics. And that's it, peace.